Hey everybody, Justin Ryan here, and I've got Marcia Stevens Pino with me, and we're here for another Webisode Wednesday. And this week, I thought we would talk about something that has been a, that a, just a topic that has probably followed you around for the last what four or five years. Oh yeah, at uh, least <laughs> almost ten years now. Yeah, right? almost. Yeah, you're you're right. Um, many of you know. Um, Bill Gaither and all of the Gaither Homecoming videos and how popular that is and how it kind of sort of changed the face of Southern Gospel music and and you know with that you know Marcia um, has been in Christian music now in fact she's the mother of contemporary Christian music and that's not what I said <laughs> that's what the Encyclopedia of Contemporary Christian Music said but it's true so own it <laughs> it is what it is so you know, and sooner or later, you know, of course, their paths would cross, and, you know, Bill Gaither, I, I know there was a lot of stuff that went down with that as far as, you know, people thinking that Bill Gaither was coming out in support of you, thinking that you were using the opportunity to, you know, try to say that you did stuff with Bill Gaither, and, and then there was also a whole lot of, you know, people saying that they were going to burn Bill Gaither records because he was in support of you, or people that were going to burn your music because, you know, which, they're already ripping your pages out of him, so <laughs> they need to give it a break. But anyway, you know, I thought we should talk about that because I think, you know, Bill Gaither issued a public statement about it. I know there was a video of the event that was online to, for people to see what was really said, but I don't think we've, you know, I know because I was pretty much there and I also know because I've heard you tell it many times but I think you know since people have asked so many questions about it that it's only fair that people hear what really happened well you know pe people's attitudes and opinions that you read from one another aren't, aren't always what's in, in their hearts but um, what happened was on New Year's Eve between 2002 and 2003, so we're talking a while ago now, Cindy and I went to a, a homecoming concert because Bill Gaither had put one of my first, well, my first song, For Those Years I Died, he had put on one of the uh, homecoming videos, and it had a really tender story with it, and it sold well, and so they did it sometimes in concerts, and people had told me that, and Cindy and I love gospel music, we, we've been on a, one of those uh, cruises that's all gospel music and stuff, we love that stuff. So we went to it, and I had emailed um, the Gaither, you know, GaitherNet, they call it, and said that I was going to be there, and they were kind enough to email me back and give me um, backstage passes. What do they call them? VIP. It's not VIP. There's some other word that they have for it. But anyway, Artist maybe circle, maybe? Something, I don't know. Something, like that, that. something that means that you can come backstage. So um, I thought that was very gracious of them, and I wasn't even sure we were going to do it. It was, you know, obviously... Uh, New Year's Eve is going to be a midnight concert, right? So it would be awfully late. Well, what happened is that because it was a midnight concert, where the big deal is at midnight, where the Happy New Year, they they did meet and greet. That's it. They did the meet and greet at the break, at the intermission. And they said, if you have meet and greet passes, please come down here. So I'm thinking that I'm going to go down with, I mean, there's 15,000 people at the concert. I'm thinking I'm going to go down with, you know, a couple hundred people. And we're going to get to all go backstage and shake hands with some of the people that have been singing and then go back to our seats. That's my picture of it, right? There were like four of us. <laughs> and I was, oh my gosh. You know, first of all, I just felt, you know, kind of put on the spot. I was like, oh my goodness, I thought I'd sort of be lost in the crowd. But 
they took us backstage and the other couple were a, an older pastor and his wife and so I saw some of the musicians who used to know me and have worked with me and a couple of them recognized me came up and said oh my gosh Marsha hi and hugged me and uh, then Bill and Gloria came around the corner and I introduced Cindy and they were both very loving and hugged us and everybody who came backstage had their picture taken with everybody who was there it, that was universal. It wasn't special. Everybody who had a meet and greet pass got their picture taken with Bill, got their picture taken with Gloria, got their picture taken with Mark Lowry, got, you know, um, I think Vestal was there. Yeah, Vestal was there, yeah. Uh, you know, they got their picture taken with each of these people before they, and they actually had a guy standing there with the camera if you didn't have your own. I mean, you know, a guy standing there to take the picture so that you could have it. So that was sort of part of the deal. So there was a picture with Gloria see Bill I guess it was Mark Lowry and Cindy and I and Bill yeah and then I we had another one with uh, with Gloria and then they went out to sing for their big you know it's like five minutes to midnight and you're figuring it's New Year's Eve there's gonna be some big finale now right and I it's on YouTube you can go see it but I'll tell you what Bill said he said you know I think 25 years ago my brother Danny who used to sing with us and by the way um, he passed away last year, and also um, two days ago we buried my mom, 88 years old, a sweet lady. We said goodbye to her. My dad's still with us, here with us tonight, so I'm thankful for that. But at any, any rate, we sang a song by a young lady who's here tonight. We sang a song at both of their funerals by a young lady who's here tonight, Marcia Stevens. And he turned around to Kim Hopper, who's a singer with the Hoppers, with the Hoppers and said, uh, can you can you do the part of that song? And so Kim started singing, and Jesus said, "Come to the water." And she actually sang it great. I loved it. And um, he said, "So she just sang one verse in chorus." And he said, "And Marcia, we have sung that song all over the country, and I love it because you may have seen and grown up with a Jesus that maybe was pushing you away, that wouldn't let you in, that you were never too good enough. And the only Christ I know is the Christ in that song." with his arms out very wide, saying, come to the water, that's the only Christ I know. Come as you are. Big applause. And we've had a lot of fun tonight, and he went on to introduce everybody and everybody in the group, and all the while they're playing for those trees I died in the background. And, uh, and he said, Mark, you, you know, you're a funny rascal, and, and he went around to thank everybody, uh, talked about um, he and Gloria having an anniversary, and they sang all through the anniversary tribute they played for those trees I died in the background and then they said okay it's midnight now and as we're welcoming in the new year people had these little flashlight things that they turn on look like candles but they're mm -hmm. actually flashlights balloons fell from the ceiling and he said I want all of you to join us and 15,000 people sang and Jesus had come to the water as the balloons came down welcoming in the new year well I was really blessed and in my supporters newsletter that goes out to about 98 people, because <laughs> there are only a few, few people that I have that are monthly supporters, and that's who gets the newsletter, I sent out what happened, what right. I just told you. One of them took the picture from the newsletter and put it online. I didn't know this. And I guess, you know, it kind of went viral in its day, <laughs> where everybody saw it, and and, and people were saying that because he'd taken the picture, he said this, and he, people said, no, he didn't say that, and he never even mentioned her and all this stuff. Well, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the video of the night came on. And it was clearly their video. It was professionally taken. Yeah. It wasn't like somebody clicking around. I mean, they had close-ups on the piano and big, you know, big things from up high. And it was clearly a professional video done by the Gaithers that night. And it came online, and it showed him saying all those things. So... When I shared at concerts, I said, you know, and I said this every time, I said, I don't want to have any mistake here. Bill Gaither is not saying, oh, hooray, Marsha's gay. Bill Gaither is saying, there's room at the cross for you. And I said that over and over again. And what got back to the Gaithers was that I had uh, said that, you know, Basically, yeah, Horatio's gay, and that he was, you know, fighting for me, and just, you know, um, not, not justifying me, defending me, yeah. and all this stuff. And I thought that's so silly. He just, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he did what the Spirit of the Lord told him to do, which was open up the gates and open up the foot of the cross and say, 
everything's level at the foot of the cross. Everybody's welcome here. Absolutely. You don't have to stay away because you're too tall or too short or too gay or too straight or too white or too black. Everybody's welcome here. That's what he was saying. Well, Bill was silent for a couple years. All this oh, went around. It was four years. And I, you know, I got emails and emails and emails and emails and emails, pro and con, you know, all about it. And finally, um, Bill felt that he had to um, make a, a comment about it. And the way he made it was to put it on the cover of the Southern Gospel Music News. Singing News. Singing News. Yeah. Which is a huge, it, it's the gospel music publication. Publication. And so having Bill Gaither on the cover was pretty much broad coverage. And he said, apparently a visit by Marcia Stevens to a Gaither homecoming concert in 2002 has been misrepresented and misused by her and others. Marcia Stevens is an outspoken lesbian singer-songwriter who operates an organization called Balm, and her story is a sad one. Um, in 1969, as a 16-year-old leader of what many consider to be the first contemporary Christian music group, The Children of the Day, Marcia wrote For Those Tears I Died, which quickly became one of the most popular songs in the so-called Jesus movement. And he went on to say they've sung it hundreds of times. And in December 2002, where someone told us she was in attendance and asked if she could come backstage and say hello, Mark Lowry and I greeted Marcia and her partner, and someone snapped a photo of the four of us. It was their guy that they had standing there to take pictures. Well, not only that, but you didn't just show up and say, hey, I'm coming backstage. You've well, got meet and greet passes before. And when if you go on the Gaither Net website, there's probably a thousand people there that have posted their picture with Bill Gaither because that's what they do. They take pictures of everybody. So it wasn't some kind of surreptitious under the ground, I managed to get a picture thing. Mm -hmm. Someone's, a, a posed picture, nonetheless. Yeah. Someone snapped a picture. Um... And I mentioned from the platform that the woman that wrote that song is here tonight, um, and that that's the only Christ I know, come as you are, and we continue the concert without further mention of Marsha or the song. Any other report of that concert is simply and sadly false, um, and anybody who suggests some sort of endorsement of Marsha in her current lifestyle and work, clearly I do not endorse or support her. Uh, though I believe God can and does use the song to minister to people. Which I kind of think is odd. Like what Jesus didn't know who he gave the song to. Yeah. Like Nabbit. I didn't know he, I gave you that nice voice. You're a queer. <laughs> I guess, I guess. Okay, anyway. Um, so, basically when I've answered people, I've just, you know, I, I want to say some very important things. Some people are very angry at Bill Gaither for basically taking back what he said on stage. Um, and, I, and I have to say that I'm not angry with him. I did write to him personally, which is what the Bible says to do when we have a problem with each other, and, is to write, and I wrote to him at the only home address that I know of for him. I have no idea whether he got the letter. Um, well, no, I, that's not true. I have a friend that said he did get it. He did not write me. Um, but I also think, you know, here's somebody who has basically spent all of his energy and all of his life and all of his money and all of his worldly goods making sure that gospel music um, continues in this country. He supports people that haven't been able to sing in years. He supports new and young and upcoming groups that wouldn't have any other way of outreach. And... You know, I, I don't know. You know, I want to say, oh, even if that was true for me, and even if all these people depended on me, I'd still, I'd still, you know, say that I believe what I believe. But I'm not sure that's true. I mean, you, you know, you were talking about uh, one of one of the webisode Wednesdays. You were talking about somebody asked you not to talk about Jesus, and you tried to see if you could avoid it. Right. I mean, you know, we get put in corners, and we have to, and we start doing the wrong thing, and then we have to turn around, and you know, so I'm. And none of us knows what it is like to be Bill Gaither and have hundreds, if not thousands, of people relying on you for their ministries and livelihoods. We might be scared, too. Number two, the Bible tells us to handle these things one-on-one -on -one with a brother or sister in Christ. 
and I've made every attempt to do that, so we won't belabor who's right or wrong here. But let's be examples of what we wish others would be loving and tolerant and understanding. You know, let's 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 give him some understanding. He's a Christian, he's a brother, he's struggling with what's right. He's the one that we should be praying for. You know, I don't need your prayers. It doesn't it hasn't taken anything away from me that Bill Gaither doesn't like me. It's not like something else happened to me. Everybody already knew I was gay. You know, I didn't get outed. He's the one we need to be praying for. He's the one that needs strength and courage. And, you know, the really important thing here is that there are hundreds of Southern Gospel artists who went flying back into the closet when they read this. We have to pray for their broken hearts. We have to pray for them to be able to one day walk in the light as God has given us the grace to do. Absolutely. And, you know, there's plenty of stuff in my life I need to work on. There's, I'm sure that there's plenty of things in my life that I do wrong that Bill Gaither does right. I bet he's not nearly as impatient in traffic as I am. I bet he's way more understanding with somebody on the phone that doesn't speak English than I am. You know, and, I, and I'm not laughing about that. I'm impatient and I really struggle with that. So let's pray for him. This is an opportunity for us to pray for him. He's done something that wasn't right. Um, and he was forced into doing it because he was scared. And because he really couldn't figure out the right thing to do when so many people depended on him, just like if everybody at the church is telling you don't sing about Jesus and you're thinking, well, but I'm here, what do I do, you know? All of us are put in those situations as Christians and we need to pray for each other. So people, you know, said, well, I I want you to know that I burned all my Gaither Homecoming videos after I read that. Don't burn your Gaither Homecoming videos. If they bless your heart, they bless your heart. You know, let's bless his heart. Let's pray for him. Let's have understanding for him and his situation. And let's pray that all of us learn to walk in the light that we're given. Well, well I think you answered some of the questions. I, I think It was a little long, don't you think? It was, but you know what? The article in the singing news was a little long. So, but, you know, I think we all should continue to pray for each other. Period. Doesn't matter who we are, doesn't matter what the situation. That's what we're called to do. Let's pray for each other. Good, bad, happy, sad. In or out of the closet. Absolutely. But tune in next week. We'll see you then. God bless. God bless. Everybody sing the chorus now. When Jesus said love to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty. You won't sung that song all over the country and I love it because you may have seen and grown up with a Jesus that may be pushing you away who wouldn't let you in and you were never too good enough the only Christ I know is a Christ in that song with his arms out very wide say come to the water that's the only Christ I know Come as you are. And we've had a lot of fun tonight. Ken, I never heard you funnier. You're a funnier ass. Taylor and Mark. And one of the things I wouldn't do, I know these can be tough times. I want you to have a good time of laughing. And I'm, I hope you did laugh. But I hope also somewhere along the way you understood where our source of joy does come. And it comes from this Christ who makes sense in a world that does not make sense at all. Let me see your lights on that one. And sing the chorus. Then Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty. You won't.
be denied. You won't be denied. I felt every teardrop. I felt every teardrop. When in darkness, when in darkness. 